Hello everyone and welcome to Herbie's Cooking Corner for September 26th, 2023. I am Herbie Allen and I'd like to welcome you today to another edition of uh, Herbie's Community Cooking Corner. I actually should get my own name right since I was the one who changed it a couple months ago. Wow, this call has gone through some changes uh, this year. So this is now the first official show where uh, I no longer have a co-facilitator. But... um. I, I and, and I realized that uh, some of you had concerns about who's going to keep me in line. Well, those concerns are valid, but uh, we're going to make it work anyway, and uh, we'll just uh, see how things go. As today, we have actually got a uh, very special guest with us. In fact, they are no stranger to the community cooking call, as uh, they've been on a couple of them before, and we're going to hear from them again later on this year, as uh, we're going to have Heidi and Nick today show us how to make homemade applesauce from uh, scratch, so uh, that's going to be exciting. Um, just a couple of quick uh, homekeeping announcements here, or housekeeping. I don't know why it has to be housekeeping, or it can't be homekeeping. I have no idea. Um, if anybody knows, let me know. But uh, first of all, last week's call is now uploaded to the Herbie's Cooking Call YouTube channel. So if you want to learn how to make apple fritters, you can do that. And I'm starting to get some of the backlog of calls uploaded as well. They are going to be in their completed form, not in the um, edited uh, form. But um, I, nevertheless, uh, they will be, uh, we're going to get some uploaded. So later today, I hope to get the baked sweet and sour chicken call uploaded and um, Colby's beef stew this week. And of course, <laughs> this call as well. And so with that, let's now take you to Nick and Heidi's kitchen and welcome uh, Heidi and Nick. Welcome. And I think I should point out that this is not Heidi and Nick's kitchen. This is Lily's lair. We're just in here, you know, working along with her. All right. <laughs> well, very good. And real quick, I do want to... And uh, yep, well, and, and while we're acknowledging people, I just want to acknowledge my host real quick. For the first time today, we have Ibrahim hosting the call over on the Zoom side. This will be an interesting position for him because he's usually the one asking uh, questions. And uh, we're, it'll be interesting to see if he ends up calling on himself at some point during uh, the show or not. And over on the uh, Clubhouse and streaming side, the uh, our uh, latest Volunteer of the Month award winner, Darcy Bernard. So uh, welcome Yay! you to you. Yes, indeed. Well deserved, if I do say so myself. And... Um, with that, um, all right, so let's uh, now, I guess I need to say this uh, properly, so let's now take you to the wilds of New Hampshire and Lily's Lair with Heidi and Nick. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so today we're going to be doing um, applesauce, and I have not grown the trees. We did not go to the orchard. We had to go to the grocery store and pick out our apples there, but it'll work either way. Now, the ones that I have, I have Macintosh because um, they kind of do sweet and tart at the same time. And then you're also going to be able to reinforce that um, with sugar and cinnamon to your heart's desire. Um, I have actually um, washed, I think, seven of the apples because they're a little on the smaller side. And um, one of the things to note that if you guys do not want pink applesauce with this, um, you can core, cut, and peel your apples. I actually don't mind the pink, and it, you know, it's kind of pretty. So what I actually have, I have an apple corer that I'm going to be using and it has a round hole in the middle for where the core comes out and then it has like pizza slice um shaped um wedges for where the apples will come out and I know Smokey will be making an appearance because we're dealing with one of his favorite things but he's not going to get in a piece of apple until after I'm done with the last apple because that's the way we work in this house. 
Um, so what I've got is I took a cutting board and I put it on the counter. And I actually have a, I think Nick said it was a three liter Dutch oven um, for the pot that I'm going to be using. And so I'm putting the apple on the, yes, I heard said apple, on the cutting board. And I'm sticking my finger, my pointer finger of my right hand through the round part of the, um, where the core comes out so that I can line up where the stem goes. And then I'm going to put my hand, my left hand over the top of the um, core. And I'm going to kind of, I'm going to tap down first to actually get it to start cutting. And then I'm going to push it all the way through. And I'm going to do that with, and then when I get it done, I take the pot that I'm moving onto the counter next to the um, cutting board, and I'm going to push the apple slices into the pot um, so that they'll go right in. Um, while I do this, is there any questions thus far? Um, there's no raised hands. Um, okay. Yeah, no questions at the moment. Yes. And I'm a little height challenged, so sometimes I have to get on my tiptoes to get on top of the apple core for it to actually go through. So if you hear grunting noises every once in a while, that's just me trying to get the apple core to go through the apple. It's two apples. Yeah, you're right. Good thing you got this pan. And the good thing about when um, when you're doing this, all the juice can just stay right in the pan and you can reuse it for other things. So Smokey actually has to take medication at night and in the morning. So we're going to save the juice of, or the, the um, juice of the, the water that's left over um, from cooking. And we're going to save some um, unsweetened applesauce to make apple doggy dough. Right now he's in the in the living room trying to figure out why he has not gotten an apple yet. At least that wasn't a little deal. Two more apples. We have yeah, you can actually use the juice for a lot of different things or the, the apple stock. Um, there's a recipe that you can use it to make um, vegan honey. Um, you can use it to make kind of like a makeshift um, apple cider. And if you wanted to, you can attempt to make your own apple cider vinegar.
now because somebody wasn't pestering me to get a piece of apple. Like a good boy. Give that to Smokey. Smokey is our dog, in case anybody's wondering. And he loves his apples. So I'm just going to rinse my hands real quick. And right now, I'm done with my cutting board. It was on the other side of the sink. Um, my pot is probably about half full of apple slices. So now what I'm going to do is bring it over to my double sink and I'm going to stick my finger, one of my pointer fingers, and touch the bottom of the pot with my fingertip. And I'm going to add enough water that probably will come to the first joint of my finger. Which is not a whole lot. And that's all the water I need. And then right now I'm handing it over to Nick so he can put it on the stove for me. And we're going to actually start cooking these on about half power. So about five on your stove. Um, and what it will do is a fork. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to cook them until you can pierce the skin itself. Oh yeah, you got and yeah. Um, you're going to cook it till you pierce the skin itself with the fork. And basically, the apple will basically fall off of the fork when you go to pull the fork back out. Which I think generally takes 15, 20 minutes. And we have the lid on the, the pot right now. So this is a good time to take questions. And well, oh, hold on. The one one side note I want to add. Um, I've done this before. Is what you could do because sometimes when you're cutting apples, they tend to um brown, and then that can kind of alter the flavor a little bit. So sometimes what I do is I like to prepare the apples with a little bit of acid, like um lemon juice or you know something like that, uh, like a weak acid, and that helps prevent them from um browning. And periodically, I will be stirring them around just to get the ones from the bottom more up to the top. And so if there are any questions, please let me know. So first of all, the one thing I want to clarify is that when, when you say acid, you, you, you're, you are really meaning lemon juice, uh, not, not battery acid or some of the other... Uh, <laughs> Acid no, no, things no, I'm that not, uh, I'm not talking about concrete acid or muriatic acid or sulfuric acid or anything like that. I'm more more talking about like um and not a lot, not even to flavor it. I mean, you're not even using a lot. You're just kind of using it just to kind of as a preservative to keep the apples from browning, like lemon juice, lime juice. Right. Um, you can even use orange juice. I don't generally use anything. Yeah, we, we don't usually put anything in there because we're pretty quick and they don't have the time to brown. But if you want to really take your time, you kind of need to have a little preservative in there so they don't uh, start spoiling on you. Right. And um, and so you did say, first of all, that you do use, like, have you used other apples or just do you find that Macintosh really are the best Normally, we use uh, Max. We have, I believe, thrown in a Honeycrisp apple into it. So maybe in a batch of five or six good-sized Max, you want to add one, um, one 
honey crisps that are around the same size because honey crisp can get giant. Um, they're very, very tasty. Um, and you know, you will, you'll, you adjust the seasonings to your taste. Yeah. Different apples will have, uh, different flavors and textures and not all apples you can use for applesauce. Um, some of them you can, are better for like apple butter. Um, I find that Max are kind of like the perfect apple for applesauce. Uh, honey crisps tend to be overly sweet, so they're they're more better for like a pie. If you don't want to add sugar and if, like you're diabetic or something like that, you you don't have to add sugar because they kind of bring their game. Um, we like Max because it, they tend to be. A little more on the tart side so if you want to adjust the sweetness there's there's elbow room for that kind of thing uh if you like it really sweet you can add some sugar if you don't like it as sweet you can kind of leave it as it is uh you can add cinnamon to it or cinnamon sugar or anything like that vanilla sugar uh, vanilla paste if you want to make it really really kind of pop out um but we don't really do any of that. We do a little bit of sugar and a little bit of cinnamon just to get it to our taste. And then when we make the cookies, we add our homemade applesauce to the cookies in order to get the flavor that we like. And actually, a lot of people have asked what my secret to those cookies are. And it is no secret. I add my applesauce to it the way that I like my applesauce, and that's that's the secret. There's really no secret behind it. All right. Well, I'm a little bit concerned about these boiling Macs now because um, they're good computers. But uh, all right. Um, do we have any questions? You're talking about the Mac computer. <laughs> yeah. No, we don't have computers in this house. No. He's going to sleep. Not even boiling yet. It looks like we have no days to end at this time. There was actually a running joke at one of the restaurants that um, one of Heidi's family members used to own, and they had um, pictures of fish with computer parts on there, and the title was Fish and Chips. I was like, I hope that's not how it comes when you order it. I would hope not either. All <laughs> right. Steam. Yeah. So I just stirred them up a little bit. They're not, they're, the water's not even boiling yet. So we're turning it up just a little bit. We have them um, uh, cooking on an induction um, stove top. So it can be a little finicky with the thickness of the pan. And after they're cooked, one of the, um, before we actually got this, um, what I'm going to be using today, um, we used, uh, we used a strainer. So what we're going to be using is a food mill. And it's what, what it is, is it's basically a strainer that has a plate that has a handle that you turn around in circles and it will push the applesauce down through the grate itself and into the container that you're catching your applesauce in. Um, it will it will grind the peels, but it won't put the peels through. There, it's it it, it separates the the um, skins and the seeds and stuff and just pushes all the apples down into the bottom and um then you can do what you will with the apples uh apple mush until you actually add sugar and stuff to it bubble. 
So I guess at this time, we're just waiting for it to, to bubble and steam. So if there's any questions, pre please uh, feel free to ask. Other than that, how's everyone else's day going? I think I hear crickets. <laughs> uh, we do have a raised hand. Okay. Um, from Joel. Hello. Hi, Heidi. Hi, Nick. It's Jill. Hello. Um, I came in a few minutes late. And um, so you left the, just wanted to clarify that you left the skin on the apples. We do, yes. You yeah. can remove it. It uh -huh. All it does is add color. Oh, okay. And, and probably some vitamins, but. Yeah. There's a yeah. little tanning, but not really much to do too much for the flavor. It's just more of a visual appeal. Mm -hmm. Pardon the pun. <laughs> <laughs> appeal. I get it. <laughs> um, so the... Um, can this same recipe be done like in a crock pot? I have not tried that. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't really see why it couldn't. I think in the crock pot, you more or less make apple butter, and we've not tried that. Oh, okay. That and would then, be a Kayla thing. Yeah. I was just thinking, you know, just to not have to deal with the, the boiling water. I'm I'm sure that uh you can probably use like an insta pot too. It just mm -hmm. it won't take as long either. Right. And then how long do you let it boil for? Are you letting it boil? I know you said when you stick the fork in it and it so are you more feeling for the texture than the, the time? Yeah. Yep. So basically, when you can stick the fork through the skin of the mm -hmm. apple, pick it up, and it basically falls off the fork right back into the pan. Mm -hmm. um, that's when I generally will take them off, and that's when I will put them through the food mill. You can do it earlier. It just takes a little more effort. Okay. Yeah, this is something I've always wanted to try to do. Because it seems pretty easy once you get the technique down. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, okay. Thank you. Yep. And there's not a lot of water in there. I would say there's probably maybe a half a cup, if that, of water in in the, the pot itself because it was half full of apples. Mm -hmm. So there's maybe a half cup of water in the the pot and some of that is going to evaporate when you when you're cooking them removing the lid and stirring them you know it it will evaporate mm -hmm. and max being a dry apple they tend to soak up some some of that water too oh okay so then that because i was like envisioning like a full pot of like when you do spaghetti or other oh no 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 you don't use that oh, much okay. it's like it's it, you use as much water as like if you're gonna steam some vegetables. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's all. That's really what you're doing with the apples. You're steaming the apples. Oh, okay. and it is smelling delirious. They are now boiling. Yeah, so that that keeps it kind of safe. I was just. I always try to think of like safety things with yeah. some. Yeah, the only thing that I would caution for anybody, especially if you've never used like um, the I guess it reminds me a little bit more like a pressure pot, except for, you know, the, it doesn't blow up or anything. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Is when you when you take the lid off the pot, there mm -hmm. is going to be that sudden rush of very hot steam. So if you don't know how to remove the lid from the pot, what you want to do is you put um, something on your hand so you can protect your hand. You take the handle and you just pull the lid towards you. No, away from you. Uh, I've done it towards me no i do it away and i don't get burned i do it away and i never get burned now well i guess anyway. either, either way either <laughs> way i do the way i do is i pull the lid towards me and that way i'm not standing over the pot um, right yeah i mean that's a good um you know thing to think about that the steam's gonna 
you know, come out and be careful where your face is. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. always, I, when I took the lid off to just check, cause it is boiling now. Um, I always take it off and I lift the back first and point it away from me mm -hmm. and I take it off that way. Yeah. yeah that's what I meant. Mm -hmm. You said it the other way around, sweetheart. Um, so we take it off the same way you just said it backwards. The the way the way I said is I, I take the lid and I have it like I'm gonna hold up a shield. Yeah. Um, right. which, so which is the same way that she did, but it just came out different, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so the open side is facing the, the back splash. Uh, yeah, yes. it's, it's facing away from you. So mm -hmm. that way you yeah. do not get hit with that steam. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you guys. No problem. It's really, really quiet. Mm. So is there any advantage, like how come, wouldn't it be easier to use like a little bit more water so you have more to play with and it would soften up that much quicker? Um, the way I always was taught is just a little bit of water. So that way it, it's not burning the apples and it's steaming them and it's keeping as much moisture in the apple as possible, even though there is some that's going to obviously be leaking out. The way I look at it is like, kind of like if you're making a uh, apple pie from scratch, the way you would start it on the stove is you don't want them completely submerged because you want some of that liquid as a uh, simple syrup. Or at least that's the way I look at it. <laughs> right. So let's talk about to alternatives if you do not have a food mill. You can use a regular colander. That's what I did before we got it. And a masher. All right. So then, when you use the masher, the like, do you you do you like come um, with the so do you train drain the water and then put it back in the pot to mash, or do you mash it while in the colander? Um, what I did before I got the uh, food mill is I would um put the strainer over the bowl that I'm going to be putting the applesauce into. And I would put all of the apples, dump them from the stove into that strainer. And then I would put the um, pot either back on the stove or away from me so I don't burn myself. And then what I'll do is I would lift up the strainer. Um, you can use oven mitts. It depends on how long it it was in the strainer for and whatever liquid is on the bottom, you can either leave it there or you can strain it off into a cup and use it for something else. That I believe is what we're going to do. Um, and that way we can use the water from the apples in doggy dough. Uh, so how can I, why not just use the uh, strainer over the sink then rather than the bowl? Cause it seems to me like if you're going to, have it over the bowl, you may as well just pour the pot into the uh, um, bowl directly. I do it because I don't want the bottom of the, the colander to touch the sink. Just in case the sink is not the most cleanest place on the planet. All right. And can you describe for everybody what a food mill is and what it looks like? Yep. Yeah. What it looks like is um, it, it looks like a saucepan with no bottom, and inside of it, it's um, it's got like a mesh um screen. All right, we're done with a turn handle on the top, and inside the mill itself, there's a plate that kind of angles one way, and then it's flat on the other, and then when you turn it. What you want is you want the open part of that plate to go over the food. And as you're turning it, it's using the bottom plate to press down through the strainer. The apples are done. And, and it has like these little tiny um, legs 
or no, it's got one little leg that two little legs I just saw um, that holds over like um, a measuring cup or a small bowl. And then there's a little wire on the inside that also helps to yeah. press it. it. What it does is the wires on the outside and as you're turning it, it's scraping whatever's stuck onto the screen off and into your bowl. Okay, so I'm going to leave the hot stuff to you. Yep, I'll take care of it. All right, so I'm going to have Nick pour the hot apples stuff into the food mill. And I'm going to get a cup for the juice. Actually, I don't. You should be able to. Actually, no. There's, there's a lot there. I'm going to have to ladle it. Okay. That's why there's two of us, Kate, folks. Oh, considering so much, I'm actually going to ladle. Bring that down over there. Yeah. Apples with the juice in the in the food mill. Yeah, there's really not much water left. There's probably about like a couple of tablespoons of water left. So we don't even have to save it. We can just let it go yeah. into the applesauce. Yeah, there's yeah. really not much left at all. So I'm just that's good. I can loading the food mill with uh, the apple bits, the apple mush. Yeah. You know. And when it gets to the point where you can just dump it, go ahead. Unless you want me to turn it down a little bit. Yeah, I actually, it's like you know. So now I'm just um that clicking is him turning the apple so he can get more apples into the um the the mill. And as he's turning, what's ending up happening is all of the the apples um are getting pushed down into weird I have it sitting on a big measuring cup. And every once in a while Nick's turning it the other direction because you can go clockwise and counterclockwise. And if you go one direction it pushes it through. And yep. the other direction it dumps the apples off of the plate into where it can turn it so that it can get the um down where it pushes it through. So that's what that ticking noise is, is it, it's the food mill. And I'm sure that little piece of apple that you know, beyond gone. Oh yeah. Thank you, pretty much. Done this, just peels left. All right, and you put the rest of the apples on the apples. Put the apples in. Yep, they're all in. Okay. Right behind you. All done. Okay. So now what we are going to do is I'm actually going to get a little Tupperware container to put some applesauce in for the dog. It's hot. I know that. Where's this? actually this? The way this is coming out kind of looks like you just bought it from the store. I mean, even with the liquid that was in the pot, there's no liquid left except for applesauce. All right. So now what I'm going to have you do is put some applesauce in there for a smoke. Mm -hmm. Um, we're just putting a little aside for Smokey right now so that we can try this for his, uh, for his medication. And then we will put, um, 
cinnamon and sugar in? Not for the dog. No. <laughs> just want just want to make that clear. <laughs> you don't need a lot for him. Yeah. So that's for him. Okay. So this. So where's the lid? It's off. All right, so now what we're going to do, I set that one aside for Smoky. We're going to put the pockets away. All right, I'm going to get out of your way. Next, putting the um, the pot, and I will put the food down in there, too, yeah. in the sink. Um, right. And then where are the, where's the quarter cup? You have a, a third on another one. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is all right, how much did that make? That made uh it made three quarters of a cup of applesauce. All right, I don't think we're going to need this. Just grab a cup of table, get the table for it. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to get, um, where's the sugar? Right here. What I'm going to do is I am going to take the sugar and our sugar comes in a plastic container. Um, and I'm going to grab three spoons, three regular spoons. And I'm going to add um, one level tablespoon and probably, eh, probably about a half a tablespoon of sugar. And then, um, where did you put the cinnamon in, in the spoon for the cinnamon? All right, so now we have the cinnamon. And do you have a measuring spoon for that? Okay. And then we are going to gonna do or a quarter. Yeah, a quarter. I'm gonna have Nick put in a quarter cup, a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. And right now I'm just stirring the applesauce around a little bit. Okay. And again, the house smells delirious, and I'm guessing the dog is asleep because yes. anytime we make anything that's fragrant, that is the one way to put our dog to sleep. And he is. He's sound asleep in the, in the living room. So I've mixed this up. How does that look? Does it all mix up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's all nice and... So now we have... The horrible job of taste testing the applesauce. I think it's pretty good the way it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so now the applesauce itself is all done. And with this particular measuring cup, Grab the lid from the um, thing. We actually have a lid for this particular measuring cup, and I'm just tapping off the extra applesauce into the bowl, into the measuring cup. And this, like I said, this particular measuring cup has a lid that goes over the spout and the measuring cup itself. And I we've not used this many times, so. It's a little bit of a fight. And so I just put the lid over that. 
And I'm just going to leave that on the counter because it's still a little warm for me wanting to stick it into the refrigerator. And um, are there any questions thus far? We should add some acid. No, it'll be fine. Uh, we have no raised hands. The side. Okay. Okay, that's pretty much about it. And that's really all you've got for applesauce. Um, so back to you, Herbie. All right. I'm very good uh, indeed. Um, so. Uh, yeah, so that definitely sounds like a very, it actually does kind of, kind of sound like a very easy thing to do, I mm -hmm. say. And the fact that you don't have to peel the apples, I think, is a huge benefit as well, because, um, you, uh, it, 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 believe me, it's less work, so. Yeah, we don't bother peeling them. The food, the food mill actually peels them for you after it's done. The peel yep. don't even go through. Yep, the peels, the seeds, and whatever's left of the little hard bits in the core are actually still in the food mill. And after we get off the call, we will dump those into the garbage. We don't have a worm composter, otherwise we would. Say, so, or you can compost them. Yep. We can't do that around here because we got bear that would just come right in. And go, ooh, thank you for the buffet. Ah, so it sounds like you have a bear of a time. Oh, yeah, I had to scare him off the other day. Oh, yeah. That's one of the reasons our poor dog is on medication. One reason. So, any other questions on applesauce? And I guarantee that this applesauce we just made today won't last a week in this house. Um, so we will be making more before we do the applesauce oatmeal raisin cookies because... That's the applesauce we make is what I like to put in it. Yeah. And on a side note, this this type of applesauce has really no preservatives. So whatever you make, you have to use. Yep. Or it will go bad pretty quick. Right. Unless you're good with like canning and stuff. We don't know how long that generally takes because it's gone before it goes bad. All right. Very good. Mm -hmm. We do have a raised hand. All right, um, let's get Jill to it. Jill has a hand raised again. All right, Jill. Hello. Um, back to the the lemon that you added in there. How, how much did you say that you usually put? For sugar? A lemon, like the acid. Oh, just a was... little splash. Yeah, and we don't we don't ju we don't generally use it, but it would just be a little splash. If we were mm -hmm. like canning and stuff like that, uh, you would use lemon. We don't generally use it because it doesn't last that long. Yeah, that's um, what, because um, I was thinking like if you're putting it in the refrigerator, does it like after a day or two, does it, if you don't put any um, lemon or acid, will, will it like change color and get no. dark looking? No. Not oh, okay. not that fast, but it does go bad pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to make sure it's like in an airtight container, definitely. Um, even better if you have one of those, um, what do you call it, the, the vacuum? Um, vacuum sealer. Yeah, vacuum mm -hmm. sealer type jars. You can actually stretch out the, the um, shelf life of the applesauce a little bit longer. But mm -hmm. generally, the way it is, you can probably store it in the fridge for like 34, maybe 36 hours. Uh, I wouldn't push it past that, though. Yeah, and, and I would imagine. We also doesn't, freeze it. Doesn't. That's what we're going to try with the, um, the doggy version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would imagine it doesn't last long because it seems just... You just can eat it, and everyone yep. wants to eat it quickly. And it, and it's good to make stuff without preservatives, um, even though it doesn't have the sh the longer shelf life. But that means it's healthier. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, Def definitely. And there's other ways you can do this too. Um, there's, I haven't tried the food dehydrating method. 
um, but apparently you can use like a freeze dryer if you have one of those monstrosities in your kitchen. Um, you can use one of those to dehydrate the apples, but keep everything else and just kind of powderize it, add a little bit of water and poof, you kind of have applesauce. Oh, to um, rehydrate it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my. I was also thinking one other quick comment I had was, I don't own one, but I was wondering if you can use like an immersion blender instead of the the food mill um if you're not for applesauce mm -hmm. uh, and i'm not saying that just because of the peel but you're really what you're doing with the food food um immersion blender is you're kind of turning it into a butter so that would be mm -hmm. more for like an apple butter than an apple sauce mm -hmm. Oh, okay, because it come, would make it more pureed. Right, exactly. Right. And then as you're pureeing it, it'll just kind of gel up a little bit mm -hmm. um, and kind of turn into butter. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. This is and a Lily great just talk. came over and she said mm -hmm. hello. Hi, Lily. <laughs> she said, where's mine? Yeah, like I let her sniff my hands, and she's like, "Hmm, this smells pretty good. Can I lick it?" It's mm -hmm. so what she did with the apples when Daddy brought them home from the store yesterday. Mm -hmm. She licked the apples, and you're still eating them. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I washed them. Yeah, that's one. That's one tip, actually. Thank you. Uh, that's one tip I want to mention is if you do get store bought apples. They generally have like a waxy film on them, and that's generally just to keep the apples looking good, uh, good enough for you to buy them. Um, what you want to do is you want to wash them with uh, lukewarm water, and that will kind of get rid of the wax film that's on the apples. Yes, indeed. All right. Any other questions? All right, guys. Well, thank you, uh, Nick and Heidi, as always, for coming on here. And um, you know what, guys? I hope you like them and hope you enjoy them because they're going to be back uh, later on, actually. And uh, we'll talk about that. But first of all, for you guys. All right. Very good. See, see we have a large audience here, <laughs> um, as you can tell. So that, that, that's everybody in the audience to cheering for you. So, um, Yay! all right, guys, um, let's take a look at uh, our upcoming schedule here. Um, in October, we are going to have me back in the kitchen. Yes, indeed. Oh, boy, this is going to be fun because I'm going to be in there alone and unsupervised. And uh, so I'm going to be making apple bread. October 10th, Anthony is going to be swinging by, and uh, he's going to be uh, showing us how to make bourbon balls, and um, I believe there was one other thing he was going to make, and I'm uh, drawing a blank there, but Heidi is going to come back on the 17th, and uh, we're going to learn how to make her ozen, uh, apple ozen, uh, uh, da, 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 I cannot talk here, apple oatmeal raisin cookies, and then the 24th is going to be apple pie, and... The 31st is going to be mini German apple pancakes recipe uh, submitted to us by uh, Tori. So uh, that's what we got for you all, all in the October and in November, Patty's apple cake. And um, Sunday, the, the, I'm sorry, the 14th, we're going to make garlic bread and uh, something else to go along with it. I might actually, um, just because I can, I'm tempted to make beef stroganoff for the call. And, um, it's the same recipe that Courtney has used, and, um, but you know what, we might have some people that missed uh, Courtney's call last year, so, uh, maybe we'll just, uh, pay her the honor of, um, we'll, we'll call it Courtney's Beef Stroganoff. And then, uh, we have nothing booked yet for the 21st, but Kayla is going to make zucchini tarts on... The 28th, so I think maybe on the 21st, uh, if, unless we have a guest, you know, there's always the zucchini nuggets um, that I got, maple zucchini nuggets. So maybe we'll actually do that. And 
Heidi is going to come back on the December 5th. You know, if I didn't know better, it was Heidi's Cooking Corner. Um, but uh, she's going to make gingerbread spice mix. Plus gingerbread cookies and gingerbread cheesecake. So, um... I hope none of those run away, by the way, you know, at least with the cook, maybe, maybe the mix won't run away, but with the cookie, you know, um, just be careful when you cover out that gingerbread man, he might, you know, go run, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm that gingerbread man. Um, do we have anything else booked in December? No, we do not. Um, well, 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 but we do have Heidi one more time in January. Of next year. Wow, Heidi, okay. Um, uh, zucchini bread is what she's going to be making for us. And that's as far as we go right now with the scheduling of the Community Cooking Corner. If you would like to uh, be a part of uh, the madness, as you can see, we do have some dates open in December. And uh, you can always send an email to community at acb.org, and that'll get past me, or the ACB Cooks at... Uh, um, email address which is acbcooks at gmail.com and um, I'm more than happy to hear from you or if you've got requests or something you'd like me to uh, consider cooking I definitely take those as well um, on that note do we have any questions either for Heidi or any cook general cooking questions um uh, now is the time for that. And I have a bunch of fudge recipes as well, so... Yeah, it's Heidi's Cooking Corner. I think I'll just uh, give way. And um, Heidi, uh, have fun. Uh, goodbye. Oh, she's not willing to actually run the call? Oh, dear. I tried. Um, <clears throat> anyway, yes, yeah, so I, I think we're going to have to get some of Heidi's uh, fudge... Uh, things done here for sure so we've definitely got plenty of time for that great uh you know i think we'll put you your fudges and at least uh, one in december for sure if you're gonna make several that is something i've not actually done on this call either is made fudge so uh, that would actually be an interesting thing to do um, well, for one of the recipe groups that i'm on i'm yep. not even done organizing it and i've got over i've got like 22 different fudge recipes that's not including the ones i found Oh, boy. Yep. There's a lot of them out there. Yes. There there really is. Um, I will tell you that uh, I think I, I don't know if I told you all this story. I did make Patty's M&M cake last week. It was an interesting experience. It kind of stuck to the bottom of the pan a little bit. So I, I need to practice that again. Um, it just uh, it, but but it's a very rich cake. Oh, and I did mention the fact that we didn't frost it. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, do we have any questions? Um, so far, no it is ends. All right. One thing I pro I will mention real quick, you know, you can always use uh, sugar alternatives. Um, I think you could probably use stevia, you know, in place of the sugar for the applesauce, and it'll affect the taste a little bit, but, um, you know, if uh, you can't uh, use uh, sugar, then, um... By all means, you, de you definitely have those alternatives. And were you going to say something else there, Heidi? Nope. nope. Lily came over to say hello again. All right. Well, that's awfully nice of Lily. Well, uh, thank you, Lily, for coming. All right, guys, uh, just some general housekeeping things here. Um, first of all, for those of you listening on the community stream at 5... I want to remind you that if you've not signed up for the community call list, you are more than welcome to do so by sending an email to community at acb.org. Include your name and email address and just say, please, please add me to the list, and they will be more than happy to do that for you. Also, you can ask to be asked to add it to the ACB cooks list, and they will take care of that also. And speaking of the cooks list, well, we've actually had a little bit of activity on here. Um, recently some questions about chicken curry. Now that actually sounds like something interesting that I should try to make on a call because I've never actually made a curry before. So um, maybe <clears throat> that's an interesting idea. Um, and uh, we've also had a discussion about air fryers and uh, what are the best ones to get. 
So uh, just uh, some uh, interesting things that have been going on lately around that list. Now, also for you all in community today, just you do not need to touch that dial. We've got four back-to-back calls coming up for you, starting at noon Eastern with Essential Oils of Haley, On Me Presents with Michael, Marty, and Michael at 1, Games to Play with Lady A at 2, and Helpful Hints on Using Homophones at 3. And then if that's not enough at 5... We are going to have a celebration of over 15,000 calls right here on ACB Community. So a lot of activity. And then Media One will have Tuesday Topics at uh, 6. Meantime, on Zoom, you've got some other calls too, like um, uh, the Sight Loss call. How about uh, Braille? And uh, we got uh, French. We got the She Shed. And I think there's a crafty call or two happening today as well. I'd be remiss if I don't mention that. Oh, yes. And how about the neighborhood coffee clutch happening this next hour with um, Belle, where you get to get to go into breakout rooms and, um, you know, have fun socializing with people. So, oh boy. And that's just today happening on Community. Now, this Thursday... We've got Let's Talk Mech, ran by me, of course, and um, we're going to uh, see that we're not actually getting away from the Apple thing. In fact, we got two Apple things coming up for you. First of all, Let's Talk Mac is going to focus on the uh, new uh, Mac OS that is going to be released later today. And how about tomorrow for Apple Bytes with, well, you guessed it, yours truly again. We're not going to cook our phones this time. We're going to talk about iOS 17 and some of the new things that uh, you can expect with that, as well as talk about the iPhone 15 and what's new with that. So those are some of the things that I am uh, going to be running. And that is just a smidgen of what we have going on in the community at large. I tell you, folks, it's uh, hopping. There's quite a few things uh, happening throughout the week, let me assure you. And you do not want to miss a moment of it. Now, there will not be a recipe swap call tomorrow as uh, Sheila will be unavailable, but uh, she will be back in a couple of weeks. We should have It's Electric next week and... um, you know, we'll learn some more shocking things about our appliances. So we've got that. And um, yeah, so just a ton of things happening around the community. Now, um, did you guys, uh, Heidi and Nick, yet to give us a live sample of your applesauce? I'm not sure if you did. Yes, we did. You did? You did. Okay, yes. Yes. To our... test to see if we needed any um, additional seasonings. Ah, all right. Um, well, you per- probably could add some in there. How about some garlic? No, no. I don't think that would go very well. You don't think so? All right. How about no. some chocolate powder? Or like uh, some cocoa? Maybe, but I'm not. I'm, I'm not the chocolate fiend in the house. All right. Well, we got to change <laughs> that, I guess. Um, how about some salt and pepper? Nah. Nah. I think we're good. You, you think so? All right. Yep. Well, just trying to offer some helpful tips here. You know that uh, might <laughs> give you all a different uh, experience. All right. Then on that note, are there any final questions? Remember, you can ask either Nick and Heidi question on the applesauce bar. They're still here, or if you have any general cooking questions. Now is definitely an opportune time to ask them. And remember on Clubhouse, guys, you don't have to be shy over there, too. We do take your raised hands. Um, it looks like we don't have raised hands here or in Clubhouse. Clubhouse. All nope. right. No one in Clubhouse either. All right, guys. Well, and then on that note, um, we will just go ahead and end the thing early today. I want to thank everybody, Heidi and Nick, for joining us as always. I want to thank Ibrahim and uh, Darcy for filling in. Ibrahim was a last-minute fill-in, actually. I'm uh, sorry my original host could not uh, show, but um, in the He did a great job anyway. Yep. In the cooking terms, we just say that's how the cookie crumbles. So (laughs) there you go. All right. Um, 
then on that note, guys, you may end the respective rooms. I will get this call uploaded to YouTube along with several other this week. So make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel for uh, Herbie's Cooking Call. It's actually a playlist within my channel. So uh, make sure you subscribe to that. And uh, we will see you all next time.